let's start here and um, we're going to start with the lips anteriorly. This right here is the oral tongue. So any of the tongue that's visible in the mouth in the oral cavity would be considered oral tongue. Hard palate is here, soft palate is here, and you can see when a bolus is introduced into the oral cavity, the tongue elevates to the soft palate. Soft palate's down and forward, right? These are the teeth. This will be the mandible. Of course, it's cut away here. The, this is all body of the tongue. And in fact, the part of the tongue that you cannot see that's in the oral pharynx is considered the tongue base. This is the region of the suprahyoid muscles here. This is the hyoid bone, again, cut away. And this is the cornu of one of the hyoid here would be the one on the right. So think deep, think three dimensions. This is your posterior pharyngeal wall, this pink fleshy um, mucosa in front of the uh, spine. Then here is your epiglottis. The space between the lingual surface of the epiglottis and the base of tongue is your vallecula. Okay, this would be the region of the thyrohyoid membrane, the thyrohyoid muscle, for example. Here you're looking at the thyroid cartilage, and this would be the region of, say, the ventricular or false vocal folds. This thin white shape is the line representing the true vocal folds. With the arytenoid cartilage, this triangular shaped uh, structure behind here, and where the um, vocal folds attach. This is the cricoid cartilage below. The posterior cricoid cartilage and the region of the posterior pharyngeal wall here in and around cervical vertebra 5-6 is where the pharyngoesophageal segment is located. And your trachea, of course, is here, and your esophagus would be below. When material is placed in the mouth, the tongue elevates. As you can see here, the white material is the, the bolus or the material to be swallowed. The tongue shapes by the intrinsic muscles of the tongue, and it elevates by the extrinsic muscles of the tongue. The soft palate is down and forward, and the bolus is contained anteriorly, posteriorly, and laterally. Here you see the base of tongue. So once the patient begins to swallow, positive pressure is applied to the bolus tail, and you'll see movement of the leading edge pressing that positive pressure against the tail. And then what happens when the head of the bolus is at about the region of where the mandible intersects the back of the tongue, you'll start to see the first brisk superior hyoid movement right there. And at this point, on this particular swallow, the head of the bolus is actually in the vallecula. So then we're going to progress on here. So when the pharyngeal swallow initiates, then you're going to see this whole cascade of movement, right? You see a synergy of motion, not necessarily sequential, but often simultaneous, you know, upward retraction of the soft palate. You'll see the epiglottis go from an upright position to a horizontal position as the larynx elevates to a fully inverted position as the larynx and hyoid move in its most extreme anterior position. You'll see the arytenoid cartilages move forward, medialize, and completely seal the laryngeal compartment. And you see a beautiful progression of the posterior pharyngeal wall, backing us up from superior to engagement of the middle constrictor and inferior constrictor. You see opening of the pharyngoesophageal segment here as the cricoid is pulled away from the posterior pharyngeal wall. Positive pressure applied to the bolus tail and into the cervical esophagus um, where the bolus uh, progresses to the stomach. Let's look at this on fluoro because that's what you're going to see in the clinic. So again, let's point out structure. So here we are, lips. This is entry of the bolus from a cup. These are the teeth. This is the oral tongue. This is the tongue base that goes all the way to the pit of the vallecula. 
this is the hard palate, soft palate, nasopharynx would be here, right? Oropharynx would be here, hypopharynx here. This is your hyoid, this is your epiglottis. These are the area epiglottic folds here. This white space here is the glottis, the space between the vocal folds. Your retinoids is this mound right here. Remember, you have two of them. You have to think in, this is two-dimensional, but you have to think three-dimensional. This is the posterior pharyngeal wall. Your um, PE segment is going to be here, cervical vertebra 5-6. You have your airway here, your trachea, and your esophagus is going to be here. So let's, let's play it through. So here the bolus is in the oral cavity. You see that this patient has great ability to shape the bolus, elevate the tongue, seal the bolus to the palate anteriorly, laterally, posteriorly. You don't see any of the contrast falling into the floor of mouth, into the airway, out the lips, for example. The fleshy part of the lips are here. As the head of the bolus starts to move back, your palate starts to move up. And what I want you to keep a good watch on here is the hyoid bone, okay? When you first put something in your mouth, you will often see a little movement of the hyoid bone. That's because of contraction of the suprahyoid muscles to create a stable floor of mouth for efficient tongue movement. Don't confuse that with onset of the pharyngeal swallow. It's tricky, it takes practice, okay? You also have movement of the hyoid when you chew. But at the onset of the pharyngeal swallow, here's the head of the bolus, This is the first hyoid movement on this patient, right here. The head of the bolus is, again, not only in the vollecula, but it's over the um, epiglottis. You see that? So it's beyond the vollecula, and you will learn that this is actually a score of 2 on the MBS IMP. Your epiglottis is still horizontal here. In fact, the tip is still up. And at this point, your epiglottis is horizontal. It's hard because this is a larger volume bolus. The epiglottic tip is still up. The head of the bolus is now we're in the middle of the pharyngeal swallow. The head of the bolus is in the piriform sinus. But see this really nice closure of the laryngeal vestibule because what's happened is the arytenoid cartilage here have moved forward and they're butting against the base of the epiglottis as the epiglottis itself goes to a horizontal position because of traction of the, um, the hyoid here. And so you get really nice closure and you're getting first opening of the PE segment, the head of the bolus is here. But you can see the tail of the bolus is still in the oral pharynx, which really speaks to the fact that there's this synergy of swallowing. It's not just a discrete kind of phase phenomena. Um, there's much overlap, there's much synergy. And at this point, you have nice, complete opening of the PE segment. It's fairly symmetrical, uh, anterior, posterior. You don't see any um, figure eight kind of configuration. And now you're going to start to see this engagement or forward movement of the superior constrictor muscles. You can see them here. This is difficult to look at if you haven't been looking at it. And then that movement progresses and pushes against the volus tail all the way through the PE segment. 